Let's begin with the commanders bringing in Jacoby Brissett on a one-year deal. $8 million guaranteed at signing, up to $10 million based on incentives. He's the guy who will compete with Sam Howell, maybe win the job. Sam Howell's QB1. Ron Rivera later said that doesn't mean he's going to be the week one starter. But Peter, what this did, and I was so jazzed up about the possibility of the commanders making a run at Lamar Jackson. But really, why would you, if you are the commanders, not at least explore Lamar Jackson before you you sign Jacoby Brissett and, as a practical matter, end any talk of trying to maybe lure Lamar away from Baltimore? This is the only player in my, or the only team, in my opinion, excuse me, the only team, in my opinion, that is, it's nonsensical for them not to consider Lamar Jackson. And again, you could sit here and say right now, well, you know, he's missed too much time. We can't rely on him to stay healthy. We can't blah, 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 whatever it is. Okay, but does it hurt you at all? to go and take a meeting with Lamar Jackson and his mom or whoever might be helping him, if anybody, in representation, what actually would hurt? You know, to me, I'm going to be critical of this Monday in my column. I don't understand why Washington, unless they are madly in love with Sam Howell and they view him as the second coming of Sonny Jurgensen. I I don't get not looking into a, a guy who quarterbacks like this are never on the market, even though there are problems. And even though if he tells us, listen, we don't even need to meet unless you're willing to talk about four years fully guaranteed. Okay, then we're not going to meet. But at least look into it look him face to face and just basically say, what is the real story in your free agency? And what do we have to do to get you to at least consider working with us and maybe working on an offer with us? I agree with you completely, Peter. The commanders made the most sense. I got excited over the weekend when they signed Deron Payne at a time when they didn't need to sign Deron Payne, but it created nine and a half million in cap space. I started doing the math. I realized, oh, they could do this if they want to. Maybe they will. Maybe, maybe this crackpot narrative I've been pushing is finally going to be correct. And then they started signing guys early in the week, and I thought, oh, there goes some of that cap space. And then Jacoby Brissett, in my mind, was the final nail. But why not at least explore Lamar Jackson? We're going to have an update on the sales situation of the franchise. But I just thought for so many reasons it made sense. It makes the team better. It gives Daniel Snyder one last thing he can do to help make the team better. It ties the hands of the buyer to make the gigantic escrow payment next year. That gigantic escrow payment on a multi-year fully guaranteed deal is due March 31 of 2024. And it's a middle finger to the league, to the powers that be that don't want fully guaranteed contracts as Daniel Snyder is walking off into the sunset. There were so many reasons why it made sense, but ultimately it makes your team better. If you could pilfer Lamar Jackson from the Ravens, your team is better. And Peter, the one caveat to the extent that Dan Snyder even considered to the extent he's even involved at this point in anything that's going on the one caveat I would add is this if any other team would sign Lamar Jackson to a five-year fully guaranteed contract the Deshaun Watson formula that Lamar clearly wants if anybody else does it I don't think Steve Bashotti matches if Dan Snyder does it I got a feeling Bashotti matches I got a feeling he does and maybe that's I don't, reason I don't, alone I don't see for Snyder it. not to even pursue it. I don't see it. <clears throat> but, Mike, you're forgetting one thing. And that is that, you know, Dan Snyder, evidently, from what you hear, wants $7 million or $7 billion for this franchise. And nobody has offered $7 billion yet. What happens if you sign Lamar Jackson, your fan base for the first time in 100 years, Not only do you sign Lamar Jackson, but you do it and you say, I am going to sell the franchise completely. And uh, and you make it be known to the officials who are doing the negotiating, I'm going to sell, but only if I get $7 billion. 
So somebody's got to come up to do that $7 billion. Aren't you, as a buyer, going to be tempted to have a 26-year-old former most valuable player as your quarterback in his prime? Uh, aren't you going to be tempted to then say, ah, oh, damn it, I'll go up from 6.5 to 7 because I'm going to have a quarterback who's going to allow me to compete with Dallas and Philadelphia? I love that you said that. I thought you were going the other way because the pushback that I got for the crackpot theory that the commanders should do this is, oh, it's going to drive down the sale price. They're going to they're going to account for the two hundred fifty million dollar contract. Well, no you got to spend your cap dollars anyway. There's a cap and a floor. You got to spend on players. And if Snyder's the one who takes the slings and arrows from the powers that be for stepping out of the we don't do fully guaranteed quarterback contracts line of thinking. That's great. You did it. I don't get blamed for it. I walk into this. I get the guy I want. The team is better. The team is more attractive. We are contenders. Yeah, I I think it does make it more attractive, and it does help you get to the number that you're trying to get to. All right, so regardless, and I don't want to take anything away from Jacoby Brissett. I think he did well last year under difficult circumstances in Cleveland. He has been better than average. He's been in some tough spots. He was the guy that was there in Indianapolis when Andrew Luck suddenly retired in uh, August of 2019, and he did well for himself then. I think he's been underrated and not properly respected given the things he's had to do and the situations he's had to be in. And now this is another potentially difficult situation where he may be the better quarterback right now than Sam Howell, but they want to see what they have in Sam Howell, and they want to see if he can blossom into their franchise guy. You know, look, this is this is nothing against Jacoby Brissett. I think Jacoby Brissett is a very good backup quarterback in the NFL. That's what I think he is. <clears throat> I mean, does anybody think that Jacoby Brissett is a if if you were to have your choice of uh, going out and getting a quarterback on the market this year, okay? Would you think that Jacoby Brissett was one of the best one or two choices? I, there's no way I would think of that. I mean, first of all, he's not a better option than Jimmy Garoppolo, even with Garoppolo's injury history. And, you know, point to me over the years when Jacoby Brissett has been given the chance that he has played consistently at a playoff level. And again, I'm not criticizing Jacoby Brissett. I'm just saying he is what he is. And and to think that Jacoby Brissett is all of a sudden going to blossom into this guy who is going to make you a 12-win team or a threat to win 12 games, you're deluding yourself. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.